Until recently, all of my SaaS products were running entirely on AWS. But at the beginning of this year, I started moving everything to run on dedicated bare metal servers hosted by a small German company called Hetzner. 80% of my systems now run on dedicated servers using open source software with only about 20% left in the cloud. And this has been a truly pivotal moment for my business. Not only did I see a dramatic cost reduction, but my products also run faster. My team and I deploy new features faster, and it's opened new business opportunities I wouldn't otherwise have. But moving off the cloud certainly comes with downsides as well. So the question is, was it worth it? And should you take your SaaS off the cloud and start self-hosting too? In this video, I'll share the top three reasons why I'm moving off the cloud. I'll show you my exact self-hosted setup and I'll share which services I'm keeping on AWS and probably won't ever self-host. If you're new to this channel, welcome here. My name is Simon Hoiberg and I run a SaaS portfolio of five SaaS tool, which is used by more than 50,000 users and is about to hit $2 million in ARR this year. And before we get into the reasons why I chose to move these tools off the cloud, let's just get a quick overview of how this new setup looks. So this is how I used to run my products. I would use ECS, Fargate and Lambda functions to run all of my code. I would use AWS Amplify to host my apps. I would use DynamoDB to store all of my data. I would use SQS to run my message queues and I would use CloudWatch to monitor the systems and access logs. And I don't think I have to sell you the benefits here. All of this is entirely managed by AWS. I don't have to worry about where and how this runs, I just know that it runs. And AWS will bill me for my exact usage. So I'm billed for exactly how many milliseconds my code takes to execute, how many times I read or write to my database, for how long I store my logs, and so on and so on. Now, let's take a look at the new setup. I now have three dedicated servers with Hetzner. All my code now runs in Docker containers and is managed by Kubernetes. I use Postgres to store my data. I use Redis for caching. I use BullMQ to run my message queues. And I use Grafana and Prometheus to monitor the systems and access logs. And the pricing model here is completely different from AWS. Kubernetes, Postgres, Redis, BullMQ and Prometheus are open source and free. Grafana has a free community edition and it offers more than enough. So the only thing I pay for are the three dedicated servers I have with Hetzner, and this comes with a low fixed monthly cost. On the other hand, I now need to manage all of this myself. So this is what I mean when I say we're leaving the cloud. I know I'm using the word a little loosely here. We're still renting servers at a data center, so we're not really self-hosting as in we have our own servers in our own house. So what I mean is that we're moving away from managed serverless infrastructure and instead managing our own dedicated servers. So why would I make this decision? Well, it probably won't come as a huge surprise that one of the top three reasons is cost. At the beginning of 2025, I would pay AWS 7,800 per month on average to run my SaaS products. Because I pay per usage with AWS, this average is slowly climbing month after month as my user base grows. After moving more than 80% of my infrastructure to run on dedicated servers, this cost is now below $2,000 per month. And it's likely to go even further, below $1,000 per month as we're wrapping up the last migrations. The cost of running my service on Headstone itself is around $200 per month. The rest of the cost is the remaining 20% of infrastructure I still run on AWS. And that sounds amazing, right? We can save money, but in all fairness, let's just get a bit of perspective. My products are generating more than $100,000 per month. Is $7,800 for the servers really that big of a deal? And what about all the time I've spent this year migrating all of these systems from AWS to Hetzner and having to learn about Kubernetes, Docker, and basic system admin stuff, which was all pretty new to me. If I factor in the time spent, is there really that big of an ROI here? Is this actually a financially sound decision? Well, let's take a look. The time I spent doing infrastructure related stuff absolutely spiked at the beginning of this year compared to the previous years on AWS. This was valuable time. I could have spent marketing, growing and improving my products instead. However, as I started to learn and as AI got better at helping me, the time spent on this type of work slowly came back to more reasonable levels. And while the whole promise of the cloud is to manage servers for you, the time spent on dealing with AWS infrastructure still isn't zero. 
In fact, it can get very complex and there's certainly a learning curve here as well. So now, after an adjustment period, the time I spent dealing with infrastructure is back to the same levels, if not even less than it was before. And assuming it's gonna stay that way, the money I save on this is going to increase month after month after month without a ceiling. So yes, unless you're already an expert on this, there's obviously going to be an upfront cost in terms of time spent, but that upfront cost is fixed. And I have a feeling that most people who are afraid of going self-hosted thinks that the effort it takes to maintain this somehow stays up here, all in the red. In my experience, it really doesn't. The cost savings, on the other hand, are potentially unlimited and will just keep going up. So one thing is the cost savings, but there's another, and to me, much more important reason. All of those services I mentioned, DynamoDB, Lambda, Fargate, and so on, they're all really good, robust, battle-tested products. In terms of performance and reliability, they're great, and I honestly think their pricing is pretty fair. But they're all AWS services. They don't run anywhere else. If AWS were to raise their prices or decide they don't want you as a customer anymore, well, you're cooked. Your products just stop running. And migrating isn't something you can do quickly. It requires careful planning. And if you're forced to do that in a rush, yeah, that might mean your whole business goes in the dumpster, honestly. Users aren't going to wait around. It's what we call a vendor lock. And it's absolutely something you should avoid. It's not in the interest of AWS or Azure or Google Cloud Platform to have you easily leave. And this is probably the biggest reasons to consider leaving the cloud. I'm super happy using Hetzner to run my infrastructure, but with my new setup, I can run it just about anywhere. Any hosting company that offers a VPS or a dedicated server can run my products. I'm not locked in in the same way. And I'm being a little bit crazy, but to really hammer this point home, I actually ran one of my products for two whole days on these three Raspberry Pis right here in my office. Now, that's not ideal. The internet here isn't fast enough and I kept hitting memory issues, but I did this with a smaller product of mine and I honestly don't think any of my users even noticed. And I did this for fun, but also because it was satisfying to prove to myself that my products really can run anywhere using this setup. I wouldn't recommend using Raspberry Pis for this, obviously, but I absolutely would recommend removing as many hard dependencies on specific vendors as you possibly can. There's just something about that feeling that you own your setup fully. Now, after moving off AWS, I still have at least two major dependencies left, Stripe and OpenAI but I am actively looking into how I can mitigate this too. I'm looking into Coinbase as an alternative payment method, and I'm experimenting with running our AI on dedicated GPU instances from more independent vendors. It's not a simple task though. And the last reason for me to move off the cloud is, I would say a little bit more specific to my situation, but something you probably could consider for your products too. It has to do with how my products are offered. As I mentioned earlier, I run a portfolio of SaaS products and they all come with a monthly or yearly subscription. But at the same time, I'm also selling access to all five tools on a lifetime deal. This means that you can pay once and then use the tools forever. And selling something for a one-time purchase that has ongoing rising costs is obviously super problematic. Selling software on a lifetime deal which have ongoing operational costs is totally possible, but if you can at least make those ongoing costs fixed instead of gradually rising as the number of users goes up, it's obviously going to be much easier and much less risky to do proper financial planning when offering a deal like this. And at the same time, I do have users asking, how can you guarantee that you can keep running this business? And what happens to our so-called lifetime deals if your business goes down? And it's a totally legitimate question that I currently have a hard time giving a good answer to other than, don't worry, my business is doing well and it's not gonna go down. That's obviously not a very satisfying answer. And for that reason, I'm working on making all of my products fully self-hostable. So everyone who bought lifetime access to my software can, in the unlikely event that my business won't be able to host it, simply install it on their own servers and host it themselves. This is the best way I can guarantee that lifetime access really does mean lifetime access. All right, so we talked about the reasons why I'm doing this and we talked about the setup. 
But as I mentioned, I still have 20 or so percent of my infrastructure that still runs on AWS. And I'm actually not sure if I can ever get these migrated, but let me share what they are and what I've tried so far. So first of all, storage. I use S3 for this and it was rather difficult to find a good replacement. Hedster now has storage buckets and I know Cloudflare has something called R2, which is their version of S3. Both of these are S3 compatible, which means that they use the same API structure as S3. They're also both a fair bit cheaper than S3, but honestly, the cost of storing data on S3 isn't really that big of an issue. It actually doesn't cost that much. My main issue here is, again, the vendor lock and neither Hetzner's or Cloudflare solutions are gonna solve that. They lock me in just as much. And so this is when I heard about Min.io, which is an open source S3 compatible object store that you can install on your system and host yourself, which sounds perfect. So my approach was to order a 15 terabyte hard drive with Hetzner and have them attach that to the main dedicated server and then use that with Min.io. And actually it worked. Kinda, but it got a bit complicated to deal with backups and the way MinIO is built is kinda meant to be using a distributed system. So ideally you would need to have multiple of these hard drives for each node in your system. And yeah, it got a bit complex and it wasn't very stable. Probably a skill issue, but I went back to S3. The next one is user authentication. This whole time I've used Cognito user pool on AWS, which is similar to Auth0. Basically a service that allows you to handle user authentication with all the security built in. This is a highly sensitive point due to security. So it's one of the areas where you really should be cautious. I tried one open source alternative, which I believe is the only one really, and it's called Keycloak. And I'm sure it's great. It's just. I think this was done by some pretty hardcore Java developers and both user experience and developer experience was so bad. And since this is such a critical point in any system, you really don't want to mess this one up. So I simply chose to go back to AWS and continue using Cognito. And finally, I use AWS CloudFront as the public entry point, which proxies all requests to my Hetzner servers. So that means that all incoming traffic to my Hetzner server is protected by default and has to go through CloudFront. And that's simply because CloudFront offers a lot of security, firewalls, DDoS prevention, and a lot of other things I wouldn't know exactly how to install myself. And for now, we still rely on services like OpenAI, Replicate, and VastAI to run anything related to AI. Though I'm really hoping standalone servers will soon come with the GPU power needed to offer reliable AI inference in a self-hostable way. If you have a lot of experience with this, I would love to get your recommendations in the comments below. How would you approach getting these last 20% off the cloud? Or is it even doable? Please share your take. I'm very eager to learn more about this and see if it's possible to stretch it even further than I've done already. Now, the biggest question is, should you move away from the cloud and build your next product off the cloud? Well, I think it depends on where you're at. If you're here building a small hobby project and you don't expect it to become much more than a hobby project, then you should stay on the cloud. Use Vercel, Netlify, Lovable, or any of these one-click deploy types of tools. If you're here on the other end of the spectrum and you're expecting to build a really big business that needs very serious scaling capabilities or a business that is absolutely mission critical to your users, then using a managed hyperscaler platform like AWS is the way to go. But if you're anywhere on here, somewhere in the middle, it makes perfect sense to consider leaving the cloud and using dedicated servers instead. It is absolutely doable to manage your infrastructure yourself and there is serious money to be saved here. Now, one thing is the tech stack that powers your products, but another huge win from running on-prem is that you get to benefit from some of all the amazing open source tools that you can use internally to run your business. I have a video where I break down how I was able to save another $10,000 per year by replacing some of my most expensive tools with self-hostable alternatives. You can watch that one right here.